So a linear differential equation of the first order would have the basic form of the following. Ax um, y prime, we'll just, we're not worried about it, it doesn't have to be time. Um, Bx y you know, is equal to uh, Cx. We have a general case like this. <clears throat> and it is customary to divide through by a of x. So we would end up with y prime plus b of x over a of x, y is equal to c of x over a of x. Now these rational functions are going to be obtuse to work with, so we'll clean them up and we'll just simply define them as p of x for this one ratio and q of x for the other one. Okay? So pretty straightforward. A lot of times these uh, can be, you know, a of x can just be like 2 or something. It doesn't even have to be a very um, complicated function. <clears throat> so, if, so the first, uh, first case here is going to be the homogeneous case. So that implies that q of x is 0, and we're going to have y prime plus p of x, y is equal to 0. That would be the relationship we have. this again here, dy dx plus p of x y equals 0, and we want to separate the variables. <laughs> now the easiest way to do this would be something like this, where we would have dy dx is equal to negative px times y. We want all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. So easily enough, we're going to have dy over y is equal to negative px dx. Something like that. Okay? And then... Integrating, uh, let's let's uh, just do one more step here, and I'm going to write this first one a little differently, just to remind you of what we're doing. We're going to have one over y dy plus p of x dx is equal to zero. So this is the same as what we had originally. We've just been moving things around. So integrating now. We're going to have ln y. Now I know y has to be positive. Okay. Often in physics we don't uh, get so fussy because we'll have initial conditions or things and if necessary our solution will be extraneous if we don't have adequate numbers. So we'll leave this as it is. Um, and this is, uh, so we're integrating this one plus the integral of p of x dx is equal to some big constant c. Okay integrate uh, zero, you get a constant. Now, let's uh, go a step further here. If we uh, try to clear the long y by using exponentials, so 
then we would have and we'll take our time with this so we have e to the quantity ln y plus the integral of p of x dx okay uh, is then equal to uh, e to the c okay now when we uh, expand this we'd have well e to the ln y is just y and then we're going to have because we're adding the exponent it's multiplication so then we would have y times e to the integral of p of x dx is equal to um, e to the c and of course this is still just a constant uh, you know a constant as said as the exponent to e is simply going to still be a constant it doesn't change it's just a different number now we'll divide so y is then equal to e to the c times e to the negative integral of p of x dx and you have a solution here now to this equation a general case which is uh, it's only got x's in it okay if you evaluate all of this the, the difference will go away you'll get whatever the integral is and it'll be something to the e and then this is just a constant so often when we do it this way we'll write one more line and say y then of x is equal to big c e to the negative integral of p of x dx and this gives you a function of y and so this is a solution now this is the general solution of course we haven't dealt with any uh, ic's or anything like that but you can see the derivation of a solution like this when the equation is homogeneous is reasonably straightforward with a basic knowledge of calculus now i suppose i'll give you an example so let us consider one And of course, your algebra engine that you are working with is uh, going to be able to solve these with, you know, with little difficulty. So you can invent all kinds of fun stories and see what you get. But we'll just take one that isn't too difficult here just to show you what happens. So y is equal to y plus x squared y, y prime, pardon me, plus x squared y equals zero. And so then we will have y prime equals negative x squared y and then we have uh, dy dx is equal to uh, negative x squared y and of course just like here we now need to separate the variables as best we can and that's not a lot difficult here so once again we would have dy over y is equal to 1 over y dy which is equal to negative x squared dx. Okay, so just like we did in this example, we're right here now. So this is negative x squared in this example. Actually, just be x squared if you bring it over again, which is generally what we do, but it doesn't really matter. I'll leave it on the right side this time. And so we're going to integrate and we're going to have ln y equals and then we have the integral. We haven't used the exponent yet, we're simply integrating. So now we have negative x cubed over 3 plus this constant, whatever it's going to be. Then we can have e to the ln y is equal to y is equal to e to the negative, let's do it this way, c times e to the negative x cubed over 3. And then y then is equal to c e to the negative x cubed 
over 3. And so what you can see by this, I hope, is that the solution to these homogeneous cases is not that obtuse and is relatively straightforward using basically separation of variables. So once again, the idea of this is to get all the x's and their differentials on one side and all the y's and their differentials on the other side and then simply integrate. And hopefully the integral isn't too, too difficult, which is what I've done here. When you solve these problems, you are permitted, of course, the access to your calculus page when we do the exam, the testing or whatever. And so uh, if the integral isn't on the page, then you are allowed to compute it as a, uh, just as a constant using your engines on your calculators. Now that won't exist in this for the most part, although perhaps in a word problem it might, where you have a harder integral to do, but you've been given some initial conditions and you can actually integrate uh, using uh, numerical methods. Okay, so that was your uh, homogeneous case. Let's extend this now then to uh, a more difficult case, the non-homogeneous one. <clears throat> and these are fairly common in first order equations. So Q of X is now distinct from zero. This leads to the non-homogeneous case. So the general form then we're going to have y, uh, y prime, pardon me, plus p of x dx is equal, uh, no, that's not quite right. It's equal to p of x y, that's what I wanted, uh, is equal to q of x. And this is now distinct from zero. So we cannot solve this in the flat-footed way we just did. We have to think a little harder. <clears throat> and we will solve these equations by use of something called an integrating factor. <clears throat> so this, the solution here will be effective. by use of an integrating factor. And we're going to see these at different times this year, but when you see a proof of a particular theorem or whatever in a math textbook primarily, it all looks nice and tidy and neat and all the steps are very organized and there's some description as to why we did it this way. That's not how it normally works. Certainly when you're figuring things out initially, I'm sure it's a mess. And then you consolidate. What we're saying here is that if we have a difference of equation and we can maybe get it to a certain point, if we multiply both sides by some carefully chosen function, uh, the integration and the solution will be far easier to compute. And that function is known as an integrating factor. Now, of course, you might say, okay, I'm with you so far, uh, how do you find the function? And that's, of course, the $50 question. And so, mercifully, with uh, linear differential equations of first order with ordinary derivatives, uh, we actually can compute the integrating factor ahead of time. And so this makes this a robust uh, way of solving these problems, which is really nice. <clears throat> So we already have the basic form here. We're going to define our integrating factor without proof. Capital I as uh, I is equal to the integral is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. Okay, so we kind of already seen it, but didn't realize it was special. We 
we then uh, multiply both sides by I, uh, yielding, and so let's see what we've got here. So we're going to have Y prime uh, E to the integral of P of X dx. Uh, plus p of x uh, e to the integral of p of x dx times y is equal to q of x times e to the integral of p of x dx. And of course this is a fairly complicated expression and you might say, gee, you know, okay, where are we going here? And I have some sympathy for you. But it's kind of cool what, what's going on here. Now, you've already done a bit of calculus. Let's have a look at this expression. So we need to go all the way, all the way to here. Okay. So let's, uh, what is this? And this is something that probably isn't taught all that much in the sense by example of when you see a first year calculus, although it's perfectly reasonable. So what you're seeing here is a product rule. And if we recall, we have f prime g plus f g prime. So let's see what we have here. Well, we have f prime times some function g. And then we have g, uh, sorry, f, as it is. Well, that's the f right here, just the y, right? And then the derivative of this. So what's the derivative? Well, we're going to take the derivative of this, which is just canceling the integral. That's our guy here, times the parent function. So this gives us g prime and g, f prime and f. So what we have now is d dx of a product, okay? And this is y times this integral of p of x to x. And this is still equal to q of x <clears throat> um, e to the integral of p of x dx. So, you can see on the right, it's all x's. So, we're just maybe complicated, but it's all x's. If we want to get our y by itself, we can notice that this whole thing here is all x's too. If we integrate both sides, we can integrate the left-hand side. It's the easiest integral you'll ever do. We'll just rub out the parentheses and the ddx. And then you'll have y this, and then you have a fairly complicated expression over here. But you can divide through by e to the integral of p of x dx, and you have a general solution. So let's have a look here what this looks like. And again, you know, even though the notation in the general case will be a bit dramatic, of course, if the p of x and q of x functions are, are not too obtuse, then it isn't too bad, <clears throat> as I'll show you. And so here we have integrating So we'll remove our parentheses, and we're going to have y is equal to e of the integral p of x dx is equal to the integral, and this is, the right side becomes a little bit scary, so we have a product there and all kinds of things are happening, and then it's e to the uh, integral p of x dx, and this is dx here too, okay? Or often we, just, we can just leave it, I guess, with the one because it's already there. Whatever. <clears throat> now, actually, I guess it is there because we have the two intervals. That's fine. So, fair enough. <clears throat> so, this then becomes the general solution. And uh, 
Now, of course, you can divide by this term into here, but right now the way this is set up, that would be difficult. So we'll leave it like this, but we want to look at an example. So I'll consider uh, y prime minus 2y over x is equal to x to the fifth power with uh, x greater than 0. So p of x then is equal to negative 2y over x. The negative has to come with it because these are added in the general form. And we have a plus here, so that's always assumed. Therefore, if there's a negative, that's built into the p of x. <clears throat> and so we want to compute our integrating factor first. So then i is equal to the integral of p of x dx, which in this case is the integral of negative 2, um, I'm sorry, yes, there's no y here of course, it's simply just a function of x. So the integral of negative 2 over x dx. Okay. We haven't got to the exponential yet. And so then the 2 can come out and we would have, so this would then be equal to negative 2 ln x. And we're okay with the, our break here because we know the x is greater than 0, so we're okay. <clears throat> Then, i is equal to e to the quantity negative 2 ln x. So what is that? This is then equal to, well, e to the ln x is just x. So this is x to the negative 2. So now we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by x to the minus 2. So let's have a look here. So we would have uh, in the equation I had here, we're going to have y prime times x to the minus 2 uh, minus 2 over x uh, times y and then we'll have multiplied by this so this x to the minus 2 uh, is equal to and then this was equal to x to the fifth so this just gives us x cubed. Now we can extend this one more line y prime x to the minus 2 minus and then this is x to the minus 1 times that is x to the minus 3. So we would have 2 over x cubed times y equals x cubed. Now, we want to integrate here, and we need to be a bit careful about this, because what is this derivative here? So we're going to have d dx quantity. So clearly this is y prime. So that's one half. So it's y times what? Okay, well that is this function. So y times x to the minus 2 quantity equals x cubed. Okay, and um, that's x to the minus 2, pardon me. So let's just have a look at it over here. Now we know that it's y of x. Okay, so this is a product rule here. So we would have y prime x to the minus 2 plus y times, and the derivative of this is going to be x to the negative quantity, negative 2, x to the minus 3. Okay, 
So what's that look like? Well, we have negative 2y over x cubed. And that's what we have in this equation here. So therefore, this is correct. So it's just a little check, make sure that we were not fooling ourselves. And now integrating. So we're going to have y times x to the minus 2 is equal to uh, x to the fourth over 4 plus some constant. And now the division of this is not that difficult because the uh, functions aren't unreasonably hard. So y then uh, is equal to, so we divide through by x to the minus 2, and when it's underneath, it'll be x to the 6th, yeah. And we have the 4 there, so we have x to the 6th over 4 plus, and then we have our constant times x to the minus 2. Right? Because we're dividing through by x minus 2 in both cases. And we won't know what the constant is if we don't have initial conditions. Okay? So the nice part about first order equations is that regardless of whether you have homogeneous solutions or non homogeneous or equations, pardon me, um, the solution is obtainable. Uh, you'll either get it this way or you'll get it the way I showed you by separation of variables. So the first order equation, you can be, be comfortable that you're always going to be able to solve them, provided they're linear. Okay. And uh, so we're going to stop there uh, on this lesson, and uh, we'll pick up the next lesson where we start solving second order equations, which is a bit more involved. And again, uh, if these lessons, if you find them useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, there's the notification button if you want for future lessons. My intention is, uh, if nothing changes, to be able to go through this semester doing this and posting online. Uh, if uh, this is helpful to you, hopefully other people studying similar material may find it also helpful. So, thank you very much.